again and we're back with my 64 Falcon restoration project. Now I left off in the last video with a drill bit and a drill and drilling out this wonderful lock cylinder to get the trunk open. Not sure if it was the right thing to do but it was working and obviously it got the trunk open. Slightly disappointed with what I found here. Um, there is a tremendous amount of rust along the ceiling edge here for the trunk and that's going to take quite a bit of work to get that fixed up and so not really happy. My other disappointment is although the trunk is actually beautiful it's got a nice mat it's original factory 60 years old it's got the original spare tire it's got the original jack got some extra parts here we got some chrome wiper blades and we've got a, a passenger side mirror because the car doesn't come with that and it even has the original charging whirler, as vice grip garage would call it, or alternator as it's technically called. That's phenomenal. The bad thing is, once we show you here in a minute, and I take all this stuff out, is the bed of this trunk is not in very good shape at all. There's a lot of rust, there's some holes, and there's some work to be done. We're going to go ahead and get all this stuff out of here because I need to get this gas tank out. Get a look inside. As you can see, here's the trunk and as I was talking about, we've got quite a bit of rust here. Uh, a lot of big holes. That's going to take some patchwork. Not super bad, but like I said, my main concern falls right across here. Because this is going to be a little tricky for me. I'm not a body guy. I diagnose, I replace, I repair, but I don't do body work. So this is going to be a learning experience for us. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this fuel tank pulled out of here because I need to see how bad it is on the inside and what it's going to take to get it cleaned up. So the first thing is, is we notice we got a vent and we got the filler neck. So we're going to go ahead and get this filler neck taken off and uh, get that vent out of the way. So, this is beautiful. It's got the original clamps from 1964. These wire clamps, obviously, um, you don't see these anymore. They just, nobody uses them. They went to regular worm clamps years ago. So it's kind of fascinating to see that these are still here. It kind of means that Really, no one's been messing with it. And if they have, they reuse the original. So we're going to go ahead and get this unbolted. spot there where we can find them. And look, more ants. Yay, we still gotta evict those guys. Alright, so let's get this guy pulled out. There we go. That wasn't so bad, was it? Alright. Hello. Let me get this out of the hole here. A little chain here on a fuel cap. How quaint. Alright, so now we got this vent line and it, luckily it's just kind of clipped in here. It's not really bolted or anything. It's just kind of popped into some brackets. I'm gonna get that pulled out. There we are. Get this pulled out of this hole here. It's gonna fight me. All right, we'll come back. We do have a clamp right here. Let me get that off. All right. Amazing to me. 60-year-old clamp. Doesn't break. Blows my mind. All right, let's 
let's see here. Uh, put that screw here. Let's see if we can break this hose loose. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and set this up over here. As long as it's out of the way, because this actually comes up out of the floor. Which is really crazy to me because most gas tanks are held in with straps from the bottom, but apparently uh, that's not the case for this one. So, um, we can get that off later. We'll go ahead and get these bolts out of here. Uh, all right, well, now that we've got it unbolted and it's free, I need to go underneath the car because we got a fuel line connected as well as a, the fuel sending in it. So, all right, so we can see here uh, this is the fuel supply line for the tank, and it looks like someone's put a piece of brass line on here and bypassed the steel. So, they've obviously had some issues here before. But this little wire here. This one's for the gauge and the sending unit. Obviously that just popped off nice. This rubber hose, I'm going to end up replacing it, so I'm not going to worry about taking it off. We're going to see if we can cut it here real quick. Now, note to self, don't have your face right underneath something when you're trying to cut it, because you don't want it pour on you. Alright. That's why we don't put our face under that. All right, so that's disconnected. The tank's ready to get ripped out of here. There's no reason this should just pull right out of here. And there we have it. I'm gonna go ahead and go on the grass. This is a sending unit. This is where the fuel comes out, and this is how we know how much fuel we got in the vehicle. We're gonna take a punch and a hammer, and we're gonna knock this collar off so we can pull this out. So here we go. Let's see if we can get this guy here to break loose. Hmm. Well, how about a few love taps to see if we can get this seal to break. Obviously it's been in here a long time. It doesn't want to move. So we'll just What you want to bet the float just fell off the setting in it. Let's find out. Set that aside so I don't lose it. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Alright, and here's our sending unit. The sock. Well, I guess I was wrong. The float did not fall off. And it is seized. This this should just fall with gravity. And it's hanging up. That's the sock. And what this is is basically a pre-filter for the fuel before it gets up to the fuel pump. And that is, we'll just say plug solid. And yeah, rough shape. So we may end up having to replace this sending unit. your fuel line inlet drawn off the bottom of the tank so we'll see if we can't get this freed up a little bit and maybe test to see if it works still it's a pretty easy simple uh, system there's a resistance wire inside of here, and there's a little wiper arm that rubs against that, and it changes the resistance of the electricity from when this is all the way up to when that's all the way down, and that's how the gauge tells whether or not there's fuel in it or not. And look at that, a little spray and it cleans right up. So we'll go ahead and test on that later. We may end up reusing this. I think it can be cleaned up. Alright, 
There's our lock ring and our seal. Well, not much of a seal there at all. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a flashlight and get a look inside what we've got here. Honestly, not too bad, not good. But I've seen worse, honestly. Um, I think we can go ahead and just kind of get this flushed out. We do have some rust in there. But, uh, yeah, I, I think we can clean this and reuse it. Just checking this seal here. I mean, obviously it was holding on, but... This is actually a, believe it or not, there should be a piece of rubber down in this groove. Uh, let's see if we can get it with this. So, right here. Oh yeah, that's, that's hard. That's not gonna work. And you can see it's kinda tearing up here a little bit. So, we're gonna, Probably gonna have to replace that seal bare minimum. But uh, I'm gonna see what I can do about getting this cleaned out. And we'll drop it back in. Last night, we took out the fuel tank and we took out the sending unit and we looked it over. There is some rust, but it's not that bad. In fact, it's not that bad at all. I took it to work, steam cleaned it all up and got all the debris out of it. It had a good half inch of just old bad gas. Um, in fact, the, that varnish, they call it, plugged up the pickup tube, which is part of the sending unit, to the point where nothing could go through it. I literally had to kind of drill that stuff out. But I got it cleaned up. I noticed that the float, a little round ball on there, had a small pinhole leak. So eventually it would sink and the fuel gauge wouldn't work. But a little product out there called Seals All is not affected by gasoline. So cleaned it up really good, put a nice coating of Seals All on it, and that should take care of it. I did test it. It works perfectly, no glitches. So we should have a good working fuel gauge and a good fuel tank. So after cleaning it up, I hit it with a little bit of paint just to kind of help prevent it from rusting more. And we're gonna go ahead and get it set back down in the hole here. And uh, we'll be worrying about fixing all the rust in here at a later date. Right now, I just wanna get it on the road and make sure it drives good. Make sure I don't have to rebuild an engine or transmission or rear end because that's gonna affect the budget. And you know, there is a limit to how much money we can spend on this project. So. We're gonna go ahead and get the fuel tank and get it thrown in here and uh, move forward. And if you're, in case you're wondering, I did take the fuel hose off the fuel pump under the engine and uh, took some compressed air and blew all the old gas out of the old fuel line so that we don't get any of that gunky varnish stuff going into our carburetor. Because as it stands right now, the carburetor's working good and we don't want any problems. So I blew all that garbage out of there, put a new rubber hose on it. I put a new rubber hose underneath the car too so that when I hook this up to the tank, we don't have to worry about that leaking, breaking, giving us problems. And this tank is obviously fairly easy to come in and out. So when I come back and fix all these rust things, I'll more than likely be pulling the tank right back out of it. But for now, I want it in here because we want to drive it and see how things go.
<laughs> and unfortunately, I had to go with this aftermarket fuel cap because the other one just spins and doesn't lock on. And it's a pain to come off, so I had to do that. And that's what they had. That's ugly. When it comes to hose clamps, it's kind of funny because I like to look for the indention of where it was before make sure it goes right back in the same place. I find they seal up better when they go right back to where they were as opposed to relocating them somewhere else. It's just been my experience. I'm sure it really doesn't matter but it's what I do besides. If it was that way from the factory and I don't know if it was or wasn't but if it was there's a reason they put them like this. And we're just gonna keep with that same reason. It still blows my mind that they're functioning. Can I just take a second and talk about why I'm doing this? I grew up working on cars. I made a career working on cars. In fact, I've been in the industry for well over 38 years. Um, everything, bumper to bumper, every car, every mag, commercial trucks, tech support, you name it. It's been my life. I started watching YouTube videos a few years back and saw these guys finding these cars, sitting for years, getting them running and going again. And it spiked the urge in me to do the same. So this is why we're doing this project and we're gonna continue on out the radiator and the water pump and the thermostat um, because I knew they were going to be bad. In fact, when I got the engine running, the radiator was just puking, cooling everywhere. So we knew that had to go. Uh, good thing I decided to get a thermostat for it because the housing is physically broken, rotted out. Um, in the process of taking the water pump off, unfortunately, right over here, I don't know if you can see it from that angle or not, um, a bolt broke off in the block. So today, I'm going to get that bolt out of there, or try to, get this cleaned up, get a new water pump on here. I got a new radiator for it, but unfortunately the new radiator is a little thicker than the one that came out, and I'm concerned that the fan blade's going to hit it. So I may have to do some modifications there. So let's start with this broken bolt. Now the best trick with any time you're dealing with a broken bolt is heat. And the reason heat is important is because metals expand at different rates. And the rust will break free. If I can get this in here. The rust will break free as the metal expands and contracts. So we're just going to try to get this hot. Now you do have to be a little careful here. Coolant does burn by the way, but it's got to get really hot before it starts on fire. So you really don't want the heat directly on coolant. If you can hear it starting to snap, crackle and pop a little bit, which is good. I'm just going to try to get this to warm up. Obviously you don't want to melt it, but I'm not going to melt it with this. This doesn't get quite hot enough. Alright. It's getting warm, so we're going to go ahead and shut this off. I'm going to grab some tools. That's a specialty tool. This is a stud extractor. It's made for doing engine work and stuff like that. They come in different sizes for specifically for what you're dealing with being in the business I have stuff like this. The other option would be a pair of vice grips or something along those lines but I'm going to slide this over that and in here there's some rollers that are going to expand out and they're going to grab a hold of that. 
We're going to hope that when we go to loosen this, it grabs the, that stud and gets it to turn. Because if it doesn't turn, we're going to have to drill it out. Try a little more heat because it doesn't want to budge and I really don't want to drill. So bear with me while I get some more heat up. Nope, it broke off. Well, that sucks. Gonna drill the hole a little bigger. Get some air. So, <clears throat> what I ended up doing is cutting that what was left of the broken bolt off with a cutoff wheel, bag grinder, and then we drilled a hole down the center of it, close to the center as I can get, and then try to use an easy up from there to get it out of there. It wasn't budging. So what I've done now is I've drilled it large enough to run some new threads, and that's what I'm doing with this. It's called a tap, it's a machinist tool, and it's designed cut metal and put threads inside steel. And you gotta be careful because again it's hardened and it's brittle. And you don't want to snap it off in there because if you do you need real specialty tools to get it out. But so now we've got Hole cleaned up, some new threads. Don't want to fight me coming out a little bit, but right. So we can go ahead and get the surface cleaned up, get our new water pump put on, and move forward with our project. These services are really good. I want to get this hose out of the way now, just because. It's staring me in the face, and it's got to come off anyways, so I'm going to get that out of the way real quick here. There. And what we do is just give it a little twist, 
and they come right off. See? Right off. Alright. So, take a little product called brake clean. You don't want to get this stuff in your eyes. It stings pretty bad. But, not for just cleaning brakes. It's good at cleaning up a lot of stuff. Gets all the oil and stuff off of what you're working on. So you got a nice clean surface. Because it's important to have a clean surface for your new gasket to seal. So let's go ahead grab the new water pump, get the gasket on that, and get that in this hole. Uh, water pump going here. Set it down real quick. Now, typically, once you have a gasket, you really don't need to use any sealant. But I'm going to use some sealant, not so much to seal it, but just to hold it in place while we do things. And we'll put a little bit around this one port here. It's actually for the heater hose. This port. I'm just going to put some around the bolt holes so that it'll stay in place while we try to put it on. There. A little bit of a sealant on the gasket isn't going to hurt anything. The problem is, is when you totally goop it up and coat it, you run into issues. Now, we just cleaned up these two bolts here. Now, I know for sure this bottom bolt here, that goes right into the coolant jacket. So you're going to need to seal the threads because you don't want the coolant to leak past those. It's not going to hurt the other one to do the same thing. So we're going to put a little bit of sealant on this one too. Just to play it safe. Alright. So this goes on there like that. So we're going to put this one here in the bottom. And a replacement bolt for the one we had to drill out. We'll just go ahead and put some on here. It doesn't need it because I know that's a blank hole and there's no coolant behind it, but it won't hurt. And we have it. So we'll get this one started in there. You always want to get all your bolts started and snug before you tighten them. Because if you just start tightening, and the other ones just don't want to line up. And that gives you problems. We don't want problems. And because there's only three bolts on this. There's really no torque sequence to it. So we just put it on. Alright. Now, we'll go ahead and get the thermostat put on there. Now, just like with that gasket, the problem with putting thermostats in they tend to want to fall out and they get down there like that and then you tighten up the bolts and you break your housing so we don't want that to happen so to prevent that from happening we just put a little just enough 
hold it so it doesn't fall out of place. We definitely don't want it falling out of place. And by the way, there is a direction to this. You'll notice this side here has got this brass piece. This is the side that always goes towards wherever the coolant's getting hot. Because what's inside here is actually beeswax. And that when that gets up to temperature, it'll push this piston out and it'll open this valve and let the coolant flow, flow through it. This one's a 190 degree thermostat, so it's going to open, push that beeswax out once it gets up to 190. Now, there's an old man's trick where you push that valve open now and you put a little aspirin in there. And what that does is it forces it when you go to fill the cooling system it allows the air to get past and so you don't have an air pocket inside your cooling system you gotta get out. But I've got a better trick than that. We'll show you that later. not the originals. That's what came off of here. That's what we're going to use. So the next thing is the radiator. Now, you're saying, but you don't have this stuff on there yet. There's a reason I'm grabbing the radiator next. And that is because the replacement radiator is actually thicker than the factory one. And I need to see how much room I've got off the front of this to the face of that radiator because I gotta put a pulley and a fan on here. And it may hit the new radiator and we don't want that. So let's see what we have. This radiator is just set in here. I don't have it bolted up. I just got it kind of sitting here. We're going to see how much room we've got between here and there. Basically, we got one inch to the nose of this um, water pump. So. If we measure off the front of the head to the radiator, let's do it this way, it makes more sense. So we do it this way, we've got four and a half inches. So that what it tells me is when I put the pulley on and I put the fan blade on, I gotta make sure it's within that four and a half inches from the front of the head, or I'm gonna tear up this brand new radiator and we don't wanna do that. pulley fan. Get this pulley lined up here. Different models have different setups. The ones I used to like were the ones that actually had studs coming out of here. So there would be a stud in the water pump, which is what that tool is for actually. And then you would just thread on a nut after you got it together. But now I have to play this game of making sure everything's lined up before we we're, not, we're hitting on something here. What are we hitting on? We're hitting on the crank. Why are we hitting on the crank? There we go. That's not fit. Alright. So that's in there. It's timed to the water pump. 
Now, there's supposed to be a spacer on here that goes between the fan blade and that pulley. Now, I'm trying to decide do we run? We can't run without the spacer because we're hitting the crankshaft. So, let's get the spacer. So, here's the spacer. Get that on here lined up. So, take a bolt and make sure that we're still lined up with the hole because now is the time. Alright, we're good. Now, if we put the fan blade on, sit, stay. is on in that spacer so we're gonna snug it up here real quick Let's see what we're dealing with oh we're gonna have to take this back off anyways I forgot got yeah, a bracket goes on there it happens you know sometimes you take things apart put it back together and take it apart again because you knew you forgot something There's still some things that just don't make sense. Breeze. Grab some 
bolts. All right, so we're gonna finish bolting up this radiator. This new hose is put on here. Next, we're gonna take care of these heater hoses. Unfortunately, I gotta do that from inside the car because they mount right to the heater port under the dash instead of under the hood. But that's the way they did it. So we're gonna get that stuff knocked out um, and then uh, we'll see where we go from there. Take care.